And that again, we'll be talking about it because we've just heard a report that has been launched uh, by the UN uh, talking about climate change. And we're going to be asking a few questions. We know uh, we contribute to climate uh, change, we contribute to uh, whatever is happening. But what do we do? I mean, those are the questions. Uh, the report has been and as has been unfilled. Yes, uh, a lot of people are saying it offered nothing new, uh, but it gave us more uh, details into the sense of agency. But as to the practical solution, what needs to be done, uh, nothing new from what you know already. So uh, basically, what are we doing? What are we going to do? And it would it be fair to say that the aggressive measures that have been taken by the West, uh, some of them, it's fair to say, uh, in fighting climate change, uh, should we adopt it as Nigerians? Should we adopt that in Ghana? Should we adopt that uh, in uh, Somalia? Someone will argue, no, these rules uh, were not in place when they were pursuing their developmental goals and agendas, and therefore it can't not be right. But well, another person will, will chip in and say, you know what? The methods the scientific knowledge that abounds then it cannot be compared to what is today we got a throne of a huge i mean bank of knowledge which means that we can afford to work smarter we can afford to work better and we can afford to implement things better than uh, they had so what do we do well that's a question that we are going to be looking at now foreign minister need to mend kenya's uh, somalia ties uh, that have been a first a frosty relationship uh, for some time now but we will go back to that nigeria jewish leader arrested with israelis freed okay uh we'll come to that to find exactly what is happening journalists killed in eastern democratic republic of congo uh, Africa's golden moment uh, from Tokyo. We will examine uh, Africa participation in Tokyo and look at whether we had a potential to do more, whether we are underperforming, whether we are punching below our belt. We will have a look at that as well. Uh, neighbors meet neighbors meet uh, over fresh tension in South Sudan. We also look at a Turkish man linked to Kenya deputy leader set uh, for court. Uh, so we went to, we know again there's a frosty relationship between uh, Kenyatta and his deputy. Uh, uh, his deputy is has it got to do with this Turkish man? We will, I mean, go into it and details will come in. Swiss nationals keep kidnapped in Nigeria. Swiss nationals kidnapped in Nigeria, and we are going to be looking at that again. Head of former clashes killed 22 in Chad. So it's not only Nigeria again, we have this full and headers. Uh, that have clashed with uh, her, her farmers in Chad, and that has taken the life of 22, 22 uh, people. Zambia hit by major power cuts. Uh, well, Ghana, we call it doom so. We call it doom so. So those are the uh, headlines that are coming from Africa. Uh, we will go to uh, elsewhere and then bring you the headlines again, and then we should be expecting Olami to join us. Uh, moment, uh, momentarily, any time from now, he should be joining. Okay, let's go to the so climate change. IPCC reports is code red for humanity. Code red for humanity. Good morning to you, Frank. Uh, good morning to all our listeners and viewers from around the globe, and welcome to Star Radio UK. It is your finest African and Caribbean radio station in London, and the time is exactly seven minutes past. Uh, and I say good morning, uh, the 9th of August 2021, and I say welcome again to Star Radio UK. How was your weekend? 
Well, uh, the weekend tends to go very fast. Uh, you know, that's one thing about weekend. Uh, you know, I, I can remember I was saying to you on Friday, uh, you know, have a very good weekend. And here we go, back again on Monday morning, uh, just like what we do, you know, Global Trotting, giving the news to all our viewers from around the world. I'm doing very well, and it's good to be back again. Good morning to you, all our other presenters. Good morning to Achi. And just as I was listening to you, the climate, climate, is Africa truly ready when it comes to climate? especially when there's less development in Africa? That's a question we have to be looking at today. Uh, how are we going to manage it? How are we going to raise this climate change and all that we've been talked about, spoken about? Uh, to what extent are we getting ready for it? What are we going to be doing? Uh, we cannot ignore it totally, but uh, what do we do? Uh, are we going to move at our own pace or are we going to move uh, with the rest of the world? Uh, that is what we do. Uh, well, I mean, um, your statement uh, before I have that to know, uh, before we go to uh, other issues, uh, what is well, uh, I mean, I was following that report as well, but one thing is about uh, when it comes to climate change, you know, the, the big player tends to have had a lot of opportunity, even though he's having a big toll on them as well. And I hope you can hear me back in the studio, okay? Yes, yeah, so uh, yeah. uh, so it, it's sometimes uh, quite a little bit worrying that, uh, you know, most African countries would, uh, would feel the pinch uh, because we have not been developed as we would have loved to. So that means that, uh, you know, anyone from Nigeria, you know, Sudan, uh, you know, Cameroon, Uganda, uh, would continue to ask, uh, you know, whether uh, we have the means, especially when we are still trying to develop and make life very beautiful, as you want to call it, but also the impact of some of the, uh, you know, you know, the few things when it comes to climate is, um, are we going to allow that to stop our own development, or do we go with our own ways of doing things? Um, these are big questions. And, you know, you're looking at those numbers that they're giving out there when it comes to the year and the, you know, the, the years of 20 years from now. Uh, just like you were saying, you follow the, you know, the, you know, the fire that is taking place from different parts as well. Uh, I would have to really follow more of that. I mean, you know, let, let's give an example of, uh, you know, the electricity in Nigeria as an example. I mean, a lot of Nigerians do not have access to good power, uh, you know, so what are the five takeaways, you know, that when we look at this, you know, IPCC 2021 climate uh, report, and then try to look at it, you know, with uh, Nigeria and other African countries, then you would understand that, you know, we have a lot to do. I mean, you know, just like we, you, you said, um, it is the first scientific review since 2013, when the Intergovernmental Panel on the Climate Change started its last round of assessment, uh, we saw that some of the, you know, like America, you know, sometimes, I mean, I think when Trump was there, he was not really keen with some of those changes as well. But the assessment comes in groups of three. You know, the first one outlined, you know, the project impact of the five emission scenario, which range from global net negative and the net zero of to emission doubling by 2015. I mean, when you look at 2015 from now, we're just talking about maybe less than 30 years from now. Uh, and then um, the second and the third report due to land in the early 2021, we look at how to adapt to this impact. Is Nigeria, is Ghana prepared, you know, for this impact is a big question uh, to tell somebody in Ibadan, you know, where I was watching a motor accident that had just happened about climate change. They are more concerned about the road which also is giving a lot of uh, emission, but they are not thinking of it that way. They are more concerned that the government have not done more and the accident of, is, a, is a poor tanker have actually lost its brake. Five people or six people have been trapped under a vehicle and I'm not sure whether they will survive it. Yeah, um, 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 that's great of the meeting. Um, you know, we wish them uh, uh, it for those who might have been injured in the speedy recovery. Uh, for those who might have lost their families, uh, our prayers and our thoughts go to them. But again, uh, for this same climate, we should look at the issue of uh, the Fulani. Uh, we will link that directly because we know as we speak now, the head men, uh, the, the head men issue is a causing problem. Uh, we've been told now, it's been reported that 
people uh, are said to have died in part of the neighboring, uh, or neighboring uh, countries of Nigeria. Again, you look at this argument is saying, uh, crazy, we allow them to go anywhere they want, I mean, destroy, I mean, the vision, or we could grant you. Because at the end of the day, if we're talking about the government, if we're talking about adopting things that we help the climate, I don't think uh, this uh, full and air activity is the way they go about it and it is unsustainable. Uh, because you cannot just be moving from one location to another, then clearing the vegetation, destroying it into good farm. And that's all. So, yes, uh, the report is very voluminous. Um, uh, I think not all parts will be I mean, applicable to one, but again, uh, within our context, I think it is more, it will be hard to adopt methods that uh, can improve on the environment uh, without making the black part of what we do. And I think this cattle issue, the headless issue, is one classic example that uh, we can look at. So, like, uh, what is happening? Well, quite a lot is happening in Nigeria, and uh, we'll take you to those headlines, and uh, we can start reviewing them, you know, one at a time. It's exactly 14 minutes past, but like I always say, the best way, you know, to listen to Star Radio UK is to auto-download our apps on the Android and the iOS, and then you'll be able to listen to so much. And tonight, it's the reggae, you know, with David West, so you don't want to miss that. You know, I love to listen to that. Uh, let's go straight to some of those headlines. No work, no pay. Directive that is the federal government back to the NAD opens attendance register to the resident doctors adamant. Uh, as I said last week, you know, we still have you know the president here in London taking treatment, but while back home, the resident doctors are putting a headlock with the federal government when it comes to the strike that have not been called up yet. PDP government met today, represent Kakos demand second resignation. Uh, also, a group roots for Osibaja presidency list. Vice President Quality. Also, Oboni Chief Abalit killed for money ritual. Sika shared the body part. It's not the first time that we've seen body part being shared, you know, in Nigeria, especially, uh, you know, when it comes to election is coming. There's a lot of ritual that takes place. But the question is, you know, what do we get from this ritual? Because at the end of the day, um, you know, do you get joy out of it? Do you get uh, a kind of, a, you know, a lock out of it? Because using somebody else's body for ritual is not something that is new in Nigeria and is still going on in the 21st century. Federal government postponed vaccination resumption indefinitely listed 3,700 cases in the last seven days. Also coming up from the, uh, from, uh, you know, the leader of Ilano Omodua, I have not fled Nigeria, according to Professor Banji Akitoye with a statement that was released yesterday. There was an audio, uh, you know, circulating uh, yesterday that uh, is being looked for by the federal government of Nigeria, uh, which I'm not sure why, you know, the federal government of Nigeria might be looking for somebody uh, that is demanding a total self-determination out of Nigeria in a peaceful way. He is the leader of the Ilana Omo Odua, you know, representing millions of Nigerians, uh, I mean, millions of Yoruba, rather, that prefer to be out of Nigeria. Uh, according to the statement, the Yoruba nation arrowhead, Professor Banji Akitoye says, he is not intimidated by the report plot of federal government to arrest him. The leader of the self-determination group, Ilano Omodua, said this in a statement yesterday titled, I am in Benin Republic with Chief Sunday Igbowo, not on the run. Uh, we know that Chief Sunday Igbowo, you know, was, uh, was stopped. Uh, you know, because of the federal government warrant on him on the 20th of July. And, uh, you know, since then, he has been kept in Benin Republic. The court case is still ongoing. It's still something that a lot of Yoruba are focusing and asking those questions, you know, why, you know, the federal government is after him. Even though he won a court case in Oyo State last week, you know, that the DSS for the next 14 days must not go near him. But the leader, uh, an 86-year-old professor of history, was reacting to an exclusive report that the ex-Senate member of the Second Republic left Nigeria about three months ago when he uncovered plot by the regime of Mohammed Buhari to arrest him. But he says, no, I am not on the run. I am actually in Bene Republic, uh, you know, to make sure uh, old conference and rallies to champion the cause for the succession 
Igowo is still in the detention facility in the Kutonu while Professor Ban Yakitoe is there to make sure they can rally around him, you know, to give him all the support that is needed as well. So let's go straight into uh, another kidnap case that is coming out uh, at this morning. In fact, it actually took place at the early hours of the morning uh, when Niger State is waking up this morning with so many Nigerians uh, with another kidnap. And that kidnap is the kidnap of the uh, Commissioner for Information in Niger State that was uh, kidnapped and uh, no contact yet in terms of whereabouts they is. Bandits, according to the report, I mean, they call them bandits, I call them terrorists, because when you look at, you know, a lot of Nigerians being terrorized day in, day out, these are not bandits, these are terrorists that are creating havoc. The commissioner was adopted from his hometown in Togan Town, uh, you know, two months after the adoption of the Tijina school children in Niger State, not Central. So you could see the impact of this uh, atrocity kidnapping that is taking place in Nigeria uh, and is still making a lot of, uh, you know, uh, creating havoc. Mohamed Usani Idris is the Commissioner for Information in Niger State, North Central Nigeria, has been adopted by suspected terrorists. Idris was adopted from his home in Baban, Togan Town, Tafa local government area of the state in the wee hours of Monday, August 9. According to information, uh, the, the spokesman for Abu Bakr Bello, the government of Niger State confirmed the adoption, says that security forces had now begun a search and rescue operation. We hope they will discover him soon and rescue him on harm. Uh, you know, over 100 children were adopted from an Islamia school in Tijena town in that state are yet to regain freedom. So you can see, you know, the, you know, the kind of level of atrocity you know, being committed by this terrorist to our uh, average Nigerian when more than a month now, undrescued children, innocent children are still being taken away. Uh, the president is here in London taking treatment. The vice president is nowhere to be found. The governors are nowhere to be found. And now one of their cabinet ministers uh, or commissioner in that state have also been taken away. That shows that the Boko Haram terrorists are still very active and they are very adamant not backing down on whatever mission that they have against an average Nigerian. It's exactly 20 minutes past 11. It's still Star Radio UK, your morning show this morning. I'm going to take a couple of two more from the business and I'm going to come back again to you in the studio. Yes, Shell, Nigeria reward 48 million Naira grant to Niger Delta Entrepreneur. Uh, we know Shell has been in Nigeria for a very, very long time and yet, uh, you know, a lot of Nigerians would like to see, you know, some of the dividends coming back to them. Uh, Shaw Nigeria announced on Sunday that 117 young entrepreneurs from the Niger Delta who graduated its live wire program had now been awarded a total amount of 48 million grant to either establish or expand their businesses. The company announced this in a statement saying the total number of the beneficiaries of the Youth Enterprise Development Program had increased from about 7,900 as at uh, 20, 2003. Uh, and again, uh, a very good one, but the question remains, uh, when money is being allocated like this, does it finally get to the end user, or is this something we just read as daily in our report like this? But in the next couple of weeks and months, those Nigerians will say, we never saw a penny, and that means a rollover again. It's still starting in the UK. I'll come back again to you in the studio. Yeah, that's a very uh, a good uh, submission and uh, the question you ended with uh, is something that we all must be concerned with. Uh, the way that say, okay, money has been given and then uh, just leave it out there or are we going to see some concrete uh, thing being done uh, is, or the money will just uh, basically turn into uh, snakes in someone's pocket or snake will swallow the money. Mm. Uh, let's look at uh, this student or this I call them people in, uh, uh, who are now uh, taking to this entrepreneurship and then uh, uh, let's hope that uh, we're getting uh, some good results from there. And again, uh, I mean, Africa is where someone goes for a loan and the person they do to celebrate the loan. Uh, in Ghana, for instance, our own finance minister went to a loan and the first thing he did was to put a cake party to celebrate uh, the loan, which is very uh, which is, I mean, that's what we do. They give you this practice. Well, God, 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 bless me. Mm. 
mm-hmm. you put a title on that man, mm-hmm. you throw a party, you take your friend for a drink, without knowing that some of your business is good, your business is good, and you make more than that business, go a date of it. But let's come to uh, the issue of this uh, Yoruba uh, message case, and we'll come to uh, the kidnapping. We, we were meant to understand that uh, the reason government went after Sami Bouhou was because he was a leader of the Yoruba nation agitation. Why they going after this big school here? A professor who is that one who did his last thing to make me part and tell people what he did. Because he was there before Nadia was coach. Yeah. And to just tell people exactly uh, the good Nadia is doing and what which in his lifetime is people that he represents or teams are of. Well, uh, you know, Professor Van Dia Ketoye, like you said, is an historian and uh, he was also a one time, uh, you know, senator during the First Republic, you know, uh, and uh, from what we had, he also had this, you know, at, at about 40 years of his age then, wrote, uh, you know, the constitution of the political party then of the, the you know, the late uh, 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 chief of Abafemi Awulawo. So, uh, yes, the news filtered through yesterday and there was a kind of a panic among a lot of Yorubas, as you can tell. Uh, just like you said, is a, is a 86 year old man that believes that, um, you know, we need to come out of Nigeria, uh, you know, peacefully. And a lot of people are skeptical that uh, because of the United Nations 74 assembly that is coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks, which we are aware that it might be attending or there might be a kind of a session where we might be delivering something that might be the reason why the government uh, is trying to now maybe locking in until that uh, two weeks of the uh, the 74 United Nations Assembly that will be taking place. And I'm aware that there will also be a, all kind of protests as well. So let's just go back a bit of who actually is, uh, you know, Stephen Adebanji Akitoye, also known as S. Banji Akitoye. He was born in 1935. Uh, you know, is a is an academia, a historian, and a writer. He attended a lot of schools in Adrekiti. Uh, you know, he was you know uh, between 1951 and 1955. He studied history at the University College, overseas college of the University of London. Uh, he was also at Ibadan in 1956 to 1961. He had a doctorate study from 1963 to 1966 at the University of Ibadan. He was awarded a PhD in history in 1966. So you can see that these are individuals that have, you know, the back history of what we call Nigeria of today that was amalgamated in 1914, you know, by Great Britain then. Also, he taught uh, at the history department of Obafemi Awolowo University in Ilefe, where he became a professor and a director of Institute of African Studies from 1974 to 1977. He was, he has also taught African history in the university in the United States of America, where he spent quite a lot of his time as well at the University of South Florida, Tampa. So you can see that these are individuals that have the background. Akitoye is one of the current leading scholars on the history of the Yoruba people. His most recent work, History of the Yoruba People, and draws on a decade of new findings and thinkings on the Yoruba studies that challenges some of the previously dominant notions about the origins of the Yoruba. This work dispels the Middle Eastern Arabia origin. So you can see that when we have someone of his caliber, definitely is also an interest to those of the evil force that might not want him to achieve whatever intention he has for the Yoruba people. This is still Star Radio UK. It is your finest African and Caribbean radio station in London. I will return back again to you in the studio. Oh, right. For me, I mean, he's saying he's actually uh, communicating his in in Benin Republic now, uh, helping uh, Chief Sunday Bowo. Well, well, you know, in terms of the current okay. court case that is taking place, you know, with Chief Sunday Bowo well, right now. Yeah. Oh, okay, that, that that is that is that is fair enough. But when we look at uh, his background, we know I mean, he has a very rich background in uh, history. Uh, he's a hero, but and therefore one will say that right so he. He represents his people and he tries to do what he feels is uh, needed or what his contribution. But uh, is he one of the leaders? 
is actually the leader, not one of the leader, is actually the leader, you know, that is leading, you know, this uh, movement of the Yoruba opting out of Nigeria, you know, peacefully. Oh, okay, now, if that is why then were they going after Sunday? Well, well, Sunday, according to the federal government, uh, was of uh, interest to them because they had intelligence. This is, uh, you know, even though, you know, this has been debunked, you know, uh, by Chief Sunday Bowo himself, that he was stockpiling weapons in his house, maybe, uh, you know, to fight the Nigerian government. Eventually, the federal government, uh, the DSS, uh, you know, went into his house, which we believe was not uh, according to the law of the, of the land, uh, you know, something that uh, you can travel down at the middle of the early hours of mid-morning at about 1.30, raided his house. Uh, I was watching again some of those, you know, bullet raids, you know, while I was doing a program late last night, where you could see, you know, the amount of bullet that was used uh, in the house. You wonder whether, you know, we were in a, a kind of Afghanistan war. Uh, he eventually escaped that, uh, but 12 people were taken away from his house uh, more than 30 something days now. We were able to get a bill for them, but they're still working on that bill process as we speak right now. And the federal government says they had intelligence that it was stockpiling. So that was the reason why, according to the government, they were after Chief Sunday Bobo. So he was putting on a wanted, uh, you know, which step, you know, sent across the African country while he was trying to make his way to Germany, you know, for safety. He was stopped in Jam, you know, in Kutonu, which is now where Professor Van Jakitoye now decided to move closer to find out to make sure that everything is being done and coordinate while Chief Sunday Bowo is there. So you can see that the reason for federal government looking for Chief Sunday Bowo was those intelligent, but we know is because the kind of crowd it was pulling, which was about 72 hours before the mega rally of Lagos State, they just had to stop it. Wow, wow, wow. Anyway, let's go to well, uh, you know, let's go back to, you know, the ritual case, just like you said, it's not the first time that we are seeing, uh, you know, ritual cases of, you know, body part. Body part is being sold, you know, either closed market or not in Nigeria. But the question is, uh, you know, for how long, you know, do we continue, uh, you know, allowing that to happen, especially in the 21st century? So I'm going to go straight into uh, that report. Uh, you know, to look at it a little bit further. Once again, if you join us now, you are actually watching Star Radio UK, the morning show that comes to you every Monday to Friday with myself, Archie Frank, and some of our other guests as well. So the story goes like this. Uh, according to an Oboni court chief based in Ikeno in Oshun State. I was looking at Oshun State yesterday, which is quite interesting. Oshun State is about 3 million you know, in terms of the population, and we were trying to compare that to Cyprus, where I'm sure Linda had, uh, you know, will be speaking to us very soon. And you could yeah. see that, uh, you know, one of my caller on the show last night says, his mother that worked as, as a teacher for over 35 years is not, not getting his pension. So he has to kick in to make sure that the mother is being taken care of. But let's come back to the actual story that we're discussing here. Uh, this uh, Oshun State, Ifadari Afolabi and his friend, Ifashim Afolabi, a herbalist, have been arrested for alleged conspiring to kill a 35 year old man, Ayuade Fashi, and using his body part for ritual purposes. Ifadari will explain that the disease was a client of Ifashim and had approached the herbalist, you know, for money ritual, blame his action, just as usual, strange spirit. Uh, uh, 
Well, uh, you know, when you look at uh, you know the you know the killings in Chad and the you know the you know the the atrocity of the headmen, you know, it's not the first time you know that we talk about it. We've discussed it so many times. But yeah. you know, what is the way out? What is the solution? You know, how do you stop you know the movement of you know some of these capital areas? You know, from from not just Chad, you know, from neighboring country into what we call a very porous border like Nigeria. I mean, you can literally walk if you know your way out around some of these thick forests, you know, and sometimes you wonder, you know, they're not moving with one or two cows. They are moving with a thousand cows, but yet the security operatives cannot stop them. So that means if we have people moving cows into the country, what else is coming into the country when it comes to illegal firearms and weapons? And as you can see, uh, they had that power to take down a Nigerian aircraft you know, last month in July, when we saw that news coming out, even though the federal government wanted to deny it, but the evidence was just too glaring and they just had to come out and admit it as well. So these will continue, uh, as we know, because there's no way out yet. Uh, and that is why uh, the more they kidnap, the more money they have, and they are using the disguise of being a capturera to commit so much atrocity to so many Nigerians as we speak today. That issue of them having weapons is something that accompany them wherever they go, uh, they have their own weapons because over the weekend you know, there was an incident uh, in Ghana where uh, some of these, again, some of these bullets uh, were, were arrested, stopping cars and uh, robbing them. And so, and when it, they were said, but three of them uh, tried stopping a the car, the brother was killed and knocked down one of them. Uh, so they arrested them. There was a killing as well uh, in the southwest yesterday. The video was so gruesome, we can't show the video. And uh, again, it was an attack, you know, by these, you know, uh, terrorists, you know, within the boundary of, uh, you know, of the southwest. I mean, those videos popped up yesterday, it was sent to us. But like I said, that uh, we can only uh, hope that, you know, especially some of our state governors, uh, you know, it's just about some few weeks now. We will see whether they will, you know, they will take to their word and ban open grazing come September 1st. Okay, now let, let's come to uh, uh, another story that is making uh, the headline uh, that uh, the man some of us has uh, uh, has has underperformed, uh, has underperformed in my view, Ogo Sibanjo. Uh, we understand the group to lose for Ogo Sibanjo presidency. Uh, I mean, it, give us insight for it now. Yes, uh, you know, you're quite right. You know, according to supporters of the Vice President, Yemi Osibajo, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, under the aegis of Osibajo Grassroots Organization, yesterday appointed him to contest for the presidency come 2023. We know he's currently the Vice President of Nigeria. He was one time, you know, the chief, I mean, working in Lagos State during one of the, you know, the tenure of, uh, you know, the previous governors as well. They describe Osibajo as a neutralizer and the stabilizer. Well, whether a lot of Nigerians will agree with him as a neutralizer, because uh, from what I heard, a lot of Nigerians call him extra tire because we hardly see what he does, especially you know with the president uh, that he has been part of you know since 2015. But like I said, uh, everyone has different views about it. You know, again, the you know they believe he's a neutralizer, a stabilizer. What provided the backbone for this president, Muhammadu Buhari? Also, the members of the group says. This during the second edition of Osibajo Day, which was held in Abuja, was a team run Osibajo. Run the future becomes in Abuja. Uh, well, one thing that uh, troubles me too is that uh, we think once someone becomes the vice president, he can trust a successor to uh, uh, lead an African uh, country. Uh, once, if you look at Osibajo, Personally, I've not been impressed. I've not been impressed about his attitude because uh, these divisions about not serve Fulani and other men. He said he comes to the southern part of Nigeria and we've not seen, uh, we've not seen bring to bear his influence on that. When we talk of dialogue, I mean, between I mean, the fascists that are happening now, he has not taken a decisive lead, but what's the media we not seen that. Unless they are doing it behind the scenes, and, and, and I mean, we don't know, which I doubt. Because I doubt some of the statements that have been made 
by what is called the school group of Wari and other things. We expect that at least uh, his influence will, will come to bear. There wasn't a, uh, I mean, a time that Wari was, Wari was not present. And he couldn't act as a, as a suspected threat on someone who felt it. So if it would be more time, you are not being told that he is not coming to the president. Uh, but someone said, well, you know what? He has he really has all the presidential power that's why he couldn't perform in this time when I don't believe in that story. What has been the reaction on that year? Well, the, the, the news has been filtering through. I mean, I've been getting the you know that news filtering through in the last couple of days. Uh, but it, I mean, now officially, you can see that you know there's more push for it. And why is that? I mean, when we look at uh, you know Nigeria today, uh, let's give you how many days we are away uh, before I say Yoruba nation now no election in Nigeria come 2023. We have about 550 days. 13 hours, 20 minutes, 37 seconds before the next election comes up in 2023. That's if, you know, election comes up. But let's take us back, you know, to what uh, Osibajo himself says in September last year, uh, when he says, and I quote, Nigeria has crack that could lead to the breakup. Uh, Nigeria needs focused, consistent prayer to avoid breaking up from the current crack in the nation world. This was the vice president himself saying so. This is even as he made reference to the biblical story of how Nehemiah rebuilt the broken walls of Jerusalem. The vice president was represented by the secretary of the government of the Federation, but Mustafa made that call at the church service held to commemorate Nigeria's 60th independent anniversary at the National uh, Ecumenical Center in Abuja on Sunday. Is Nigeria crack? I'm sure a lot of Nigerians believe Nigeria is crack. That is why the Biafra are demanding a total out of Nigeria. The Middle Belt are saying the same thing, and uh, so the Yoruba are saying the same thing. And like I said today, there's a sit down from the Biafra in the Southeast as we speak today. Yeah, and uh, let me ask uh, for those of you who are following us, uh, we say thank you very much for joining us uh, our live on Star Radio UK. Uh, but the question is, do you think the vice president has performed enough uh, to be able to lead the nation of Nigeria? Uh, if you're on our team, uh, you can uh, basically message that in your opinion, in your own opinion, what do you think? Do you think the vice president will be a good president uh, for Nigeria? He has defeated Nigeria and crack. You think he has the clue to bring Nigeria together? And if you have the clue, what has been done soon as a bit of what has you can do? And do you think if we repose our confidence in him as the next leader of Nigeria, we will have a better Nigeria? Uh, that is to you out there. Uh, please uh, do send us our, uh, your. Uh, messages at Twitter feed at Star Radio UK Star Radio. Uh, join us also on our Facebook page. Uh, you can also email us at info at Star Radio UK. So our phone line is 0208 Do you think Osi Banjo is at the fit of people and fit to be the best president of Nigeria? Hola, I Adam. Let's go straight to our Twitter. What is trending on Nigeria? Tweeted this morning, at 11:41. Uh, time spent so far. Buhari is trending. I'm sure a lot of people know why Buhari trends. Is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. IPOB is trending. Kaduna is trending. Igbo is trending. Let me just touch on why Buhari is trending this morning. It does trend for different reasons. Uh, let's see. Uh, according to Henry Shield, uh, Henry Shield, some 15 hours ago. The body language of Buhari speaks louder against anything democratic. Uh, that is coming as well. Also, according to Sahara Reporter, ex imo Governor Koroche to build tuition free Islamic University in Buhari's hometown, Daura. Okay, uh, that is also coming there as well. Also, group threatened Buhari Attorney General Malami with a lawsuit over unapproved spending of 880 billion naira by the minister and others. So that is why Buhari is trending this morning. Let's go and see why, uh, you know, I uh, I probably is trending, I'm sure, uh, because maybe of the sit-down at home that is currently uh, taking place as well. Uh, the whole, okay, this is a kind of a flaw, just like we're discussing climate change as well. Also, the whole area is on a total shutdown from the video I'm watching right here. Live in Asa Road, Abba in Abia State, is a complete shutdown. AKA is a go zone by IPOB leadership in solidarity for Mazin and the Canon till he's been released. We do know that uh, you know they you know there is going to be a sit down every 
Monday, if I'm right, uh, according to the IPOP, uh, and that is why that is trending as well. Uh, this this is a state of Abakaliki Kalaba, ever busy expressway, empty, scanty. The people are in total compliance to the sit down at all. Could this now be another wave of a protest to shut down the economic of that particular, uh, you know, southeast area? We will time will tell uh, as we continue to monitor that as well. Also, the, before we go and come back to you in the studio, just a sit at home order by IPOP is being observed throughout the Biafra land today, 9th of August. This is the Federal Road, Abba Umaya in Ama Ama Kwaya in Imo State in the early hours. The whole road is completely quiet. Frank, it seems the IPOP are really taking the message in as Southeast is on a total lockdown. This is Star Radio UK. And then I will take one more from the Ilano Omo Odua, uh, you know, on their Twitter feed this morning. Uh, and it says, and I quote, uh, again, this is uh, coming from Ilano Omo Odua. It has become a sin in Nigeria for the oppressed to cry for justice. The Fulanese and the English people are of the same ideology, the subjection, extermination, and the destruction of the indigenous people. Star Radio UK, and I'll come back to you now in the studio. That's a very powerful one that the Fulani and the English are the same. <laughs> <laughs> Because at the end of the day, uh, those were the same uh, tactics that were used uh, to subdue us. Uh, they can't be all and uh, take whatever they love to you, subdue you, and uh, then improve their will, uh, their way of life, or I mean, on to, and that's exactly what it, uh, they've done. Uh, well, let me, uh, let me uh, finally, uh, what is up with the court case uh, with the Sanji? Well, uh, I mean, I spoke to the team on a daily basis. Uh, you know, we're waiting you know, for the next court case. It's still currently being held, you know, for his own safety, you know, uh, by the Ene uh, in their facility there. Uh, but until we know when the judge, I mean, you've got to remember that, uh, you know, it's a different law uh, and different way of operating in Bene as against other African countries. So we have to wait and see when the judge will bring that court case back again. And then you know the lawyers will argue well he needs to be you know you know released also you know asylum has been applied for him so there's a lot of process that is actually still on the going on the ground but not everything we can say on air but all i can say is to those that are friends family uh you know and those that are well wishes of chief sunday Bowo is fine like i say i speak with the team on the ground on a daily basis and what are the well, uh, it's not just about being uh, kidnapped. A lot of people uh, are also looking at, you know, the case of Abba Kaira. As you can tell, that the government now is trying to do what they call the due process. You know, by you know, before they can release him to FBI on the charges, you know, laid on him. But they did allow that with Mazi Inam Dekano because he was kidnapped from Kenya. And now the same process they will have to go through should they need to Sunday go back, even though we know the Republic and Nigeria do not have extradition treaty. It's a political fugitive and it was he was running away for his life because his life was under threat by the federal government of Nigeria. Then we can even argue to the extent that if uh, uh, they have no extradition treaty, what well, they have to be and what they call it, uh, interval orders, which they have done for the still have to do that extradition. Uh, finally before you, uh, don't go yet because you still have Frank there and some of our other guests that will be joining the, the due cause of the program stay tuned to Star Radio UK and remember if you're sending money home do you send weight remember the code S for Star R for Radio I'll be back again same time tomorrow at 11 o'clock from those watching on all the other platforms that we are transmitting from I say thank you very much stay tuned to Star Radio UK but for now bye from me uh, Olave, we'll say thank you Update from Nigeria. Uh, we'll continue the, I mean, the news updates in house. Uh, Olaf, well, thank you very much. And for those of you who are following up, we say you thank you. Thank you very much, uh, those of you that are watching. Uh, we'll be back again uh, some other time uh, on Star Radio UK. But make sure you tune in with me on Quakey Media when I'll be coming live on later on as well. Bye for now and have a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you're watching. Thank you very much to those of you on Instagram, Moni100312. Good morning to those of you uh, as well on all other platforms as well.
I'm sure if you missed our late night broadcast yesterday, please find time uh, and try to watch that. Let me uh, just bring this back here uh, to those of you that are uh, I'll probably just end the broadcast in just about a few minutes. Uh, but let me move it closer to me and then let's show you a different screen okay a different screen that you might probably see yeah that's it yeah so i'll be back uh, later on uh to give us more updates so make sure you tune in uh with myself uh and likewise uh quickie media will be giving you more updates we will continue from where we stopped late last night uh, sometime maybe later on today, if time permit. But the most important thing is, what have Nigeria done for you that you really want to kill yourself being in Nigeria? Nigeria has never worked for any one of us, and it is time now that we say it and tell ourselves the truth. Nigeria is a crime scene. Go and look at the news in somewhere in Ibadan, where uh, a fuel tanker has literally lost brake, six people trapped underneath you know the you know the vehicle there as well is this the way you want to continue your life especially those of you that are youth let's think about it now join the yoruba movement so that we can literally get out as quickly as possible out of the contraction you call nigeria for me have a very good morning bye for now And thank you those of you watching on YouTube. I could spot every one of you. Uh, we'll be back later on with our normal program when I've got enough rest again. We must break the zoo. The zoo must definitely come down. No going back. Shit or country. <laughs>